I think this phenomena is not only happening here. Um, there's even some people call ISKCON a revolving door, you know, which is one of those spinning doors at the, at the shopping center, right? Uh, so ISKCON has been called that. Uh, so the phenomena is, is, is worldwide. Uh, few, few stay and many are moving on and there's always change and so on. And in some way that holds back the, uh, the growth and the development. Right? Because if people would really stay, they can build something up, etc. Um, yes, um, we can identify the, the problem, the, the cause of the problem, and we can also look at some things we can, uh, some solutions we can offer. Well, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm just sketching now because it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's not a seminar, you know what I mean? So uh, just sketching. Uh, you could say, um, we are coming from uh, a life of, uh, in the material world, you come into an ISKCON community and it is nice spiritually, a lot of inspiration, but it's also limiting. It is also limiting because it's, you have to sacrifice some of your individual freedom living in such a community. Uh, you're supposed to, the, com the community is not only nice and loving, but it also adheres to strict spiritual standards. And, you know, and sometimes you just feel, I want my freedom and I want to be on my own, you know, just somewhere where I can do what I want. Yeah, so, uh, so that's one reason why a lot of people move on into their own uh, private space after some years and then they start to fill in Krishna consciousness in their own way uh, and not exactly according to the book. Once I discussed this with Sachin Anand Maharaj, he said, he said, I give it an average of five, six years. Right? That's what he said. Um, but he... he uh, he also knew the phenomena. Um, what can we do? You know, so that wasn't a full analysis of the problem. It was just one comment. Uh, you know, what can we do to make it uh, make it attractive to stay here? Um, well, okay, plans. Yes, this this place. Uh, as long as it's uh, from the from day one. It was conceived as a retreat center. Right? It was clear this is a retreat center. It's not a farm, you know, it's, it's, it's a retreat center. It's a place where people can go for that purpose. And that's what they, when they came and they looked at the houses, that's what they thought it was going to be, a community and a retreat center. And over the years, it, it, it did function like that, you know. And various leaders have used it as retreat center. And it's still uh, basically being used to that. And right now, we are retreating from coronavirus. <laughs> uh, so it's a retreat center, I think, by its uh, natural identity. From my point of view, when you look at a project and you want to make it into something, the first thing is you first look at what is it. Yeah? Don't just start dreaming, what shall we make of this place? But first you look very carefully, what is this place? You know, like I was working in Mayapur with professional architects on the master plan. What, what they did, they, they looked at how, f how is it connected? How far is the place from all the train stations? Or from, from the, how are the roads? How is this? How is that? How easy it is to get here? Uh, you know, how close are the nearest cities, which are the target areas. It, it, it really laid it out like that, very nicely. And say, what is it? Right? And they spent like a lot of time on what is the place? What is this place? And then, accordingly, we can make plans. Um, 
and then you make a beautiful plan and then the beautiful plan goes into the drawer. Oh, and why does it go into the drawer? Because you didn't do one of the things you have to do is that from the very beginning you have to involve everyone. As many as possible. People have to feel they're part of it. Otherwise, you know, if it's just a nice little management group and they come with a plan and other people are not part of it, and then if you're like, well, you know, nice plan, but not my plan, you know. I mean, I don't really feel like, um, you know, participating. No, so people have to feel ownership of the plan. If, and sometimes, you know, as, as the management, you have to even let people, you already know what you want, but you can't say what you want. You have to let them discover it on, them, on their own so that it becomes their idea, not yours. Because if it's your idea, mm -mm, it's not going to go anywhere. No, you have to wait till they discover the idea you already had. And then, they go, and then you go, wow, that's an amazing idea. Anyway, these are all... Uh, but participation is the principle of... Uh, of, of uh, and letting people do things, let them take initiatives. And adjust your ideas to some of theirs. Yeah? Uh, you know, let people do their own individual thing. Years ago, uh, we discussed build projects around people. Right? Don't build projects, but just build projects to accommodate people and their I, their desires and their build it on the desires of people. Yeah, pure desires, of course, but you know, let let people fulfill their desires here. Then, because when you fulfill your desire, then you want to stay. Anyway, those are some ideas. But uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>